Howdy, folks. <laughs> this is Rascal Dan. How y'all doing? <laughs> well, I'll tell you what. I'm out here to introduce to you my Rascal Dan odor counteracting frost chest. That's right. <laughs> I'm so proud of this product. And I'll tell you what. If you take a look at it, I think you're going to find a lot of interesting stuff about it. Before I go into that and test this, pass this on to my buddy Paul Edwards, I want to tell you what made me think of this in the first place. I got some stories to tell you and a lot of them start with smell of fish. Yeah, you heard me, the smell of fish. How many times have I ever gone into a place, smelled that smell of fish and went, whoa. Or even when I go fishing, you know, sometimes I start lining them up into my eyes chest because I've had a full day of catching fish. <laughs> Got them everything going in the eyes chest. When I get home, woo, it smells weird in there. Well, <laughs> well, I just thought I'd go on and come up with a solution. But I'm not going to go into the details there because I'm not that scientific. So I'm going to turn the phone over to my buddy, Paul Edwards, and he is going to explain what's going on. So thank you very much, and you all have a great day. You hear? <laughs> well, Rascal, <laughs> what did I call you, Rascal Dan? I'll call you Rascal Dan. Hey, Rascal Dan, I'll tell you what, thank you for letting me talk about this. Uh, folks, this is a chemical that we're using here. So please keep in mind that it is a chemical and with all chemicals you have to take proper safety precautions. So I want to first of all start off by saying um, please use uh, goggles and uh, you know, rubber gloves, nitrile gloves is the ones I like to use. And please use that anytime you're around the uh, chemistry such as bleach or calcium hypochlorite, which today we're going to be talking about calcium hypochlorite. But uh, another, another example of what the active ingredient of calcium hypochlorite is, is that, that would be bleach, you know, and you've heard about bleach as a household product. Calcium hypochlorite is also a household product, and today we're going to be talking about calcium hypochlorite. And uh, what I'm going to do first is I'm going to start off by showing you that I do have my uh, latex gloves on there. Uh, this is a nitrile glove, and as you can see right there, this is about the size little less than a dime, okay? This is what the Rascal Dan odor counteract and pellet looks like, okay? It is a calcium hypochlorite uh, chemistry, so please look that out, calcium hypochlorite. And this creates 70% available chlorine, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna toss it into the ice chest. You hear that? Okay, so I tossed it in there. Now what's going to happen is that sits at the bottom of an empty um, ice chest. And this one here in particular is a, uh, a uh, I'm not going to mention the brand, but it is a roll around ice chest, which you commonly find at tailgate parties and home parties and buddy parties and so forth. So we've got this, uh, this here is a um, ice chest that um, if you look at the label for the Rascal Dan Odor Counteractant, you'll notice that we recommend that you use it in 48 quart ice chest and above, okay? This one's approximately 60 quarts, but starting at 48 quarts and above is where we recommend that you use uh, this um, product, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I started out with an empty container it doesn't matter whether it's wet on the bottom or dry on the bottom. You throw that pellet in, um, and then what you do is you go on and add the ice. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some ice to this ice chest, and you just kind of watch me do that, please. The ice has already been prepared. Uh, basically, what I did was I... Uh, hit it against the ground a couple times. Okay, so this right here is the first bag of ice. This is a 10 pound bag. I'm gonna put another bag of ice in here. Another 
bag of ice in there. Okay, that right there is about a half a um, that's a half a ice chest of ice, okay? Now there are there are some of those of you out there that when you fill your ice chest, you fill it halfway. So that you can go on and include storage items, okay? So right now I have it half in uh, halfway open, or excuse me, halfway filled, it's completely open, halfway filled. And I have a halfway uh, filled with ice. Okay, I'm going to dump just one more bag in. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go on and do some tests. Okay, so I'm going to dump this one more bag. Approximately the same amount, five pounds. This is, this is leftover ice from a previous party. So some of y'all have that. Okay, so uh, now I have those bags of ice in there and as you can see it's pretty close pretty close to halfway or more here I'm making some adjustments to the camera here okay so there you are okay it looks like halfway filled to you doesn't it so um, how do you know that an odor counteractant is working or not okay well first of all what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna close my case there my ice chest cover and what's going to happen is this. Calcium hypochlorite is a solid chlorine carrier, okay? So they take calcium and they add the chlorine gas uh, into this calcium. And then what happens is that when ice makes contact with the pellet, the pellet starts to dissolve ever so slowly because remember it's not like it's not the same type of dissolving rate that you would find if you had water if you took a tablet and you dumped it directly into water uh, its dissolving rate is going to be different from a solid uh, pellet dissolving in ice but nevertheless we're going to still get the same effect okay because I've closed the top and let's say that I do have some fish. If you if you noticed, uh, Rascal Dan was talking about fish as being the inspiration for him uh, designing uh, this solution. Is uh, fish is an odorous type of uh, product, okay? And so it's it's sitting on the top of the ice, or 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 maybe even surrounded by ice. And it's present. So basically, the fish is present. The ice is present, the calcium hypochlorite is present, and one more thing is present, the odor, okay? So what an odor counteractant does is it masks the odors, or it may very well create a technical uh, uh, event within the air of the odor. So you have, you know, you have the odor itself, an odor molecule, and then you have the... Um, the uh, chlorine gas that is coming off of the calcium hypochlorite pellet and so now all of a sudden it's taking part of that space up so you've got you've got the odor you've got the chlorine molecule chlorine uh, chlorine molecule in the air so because it's dissolved you got chlorine in the air and then and then finally you have uh, just regular air okay so this starts to build up okay so so what are we going to do to, to uh, determine whether chlorine will actually be doing something of benefit in, in, in the presence here? Okay, well one thing that we could do is we could go on and just open up the case and smell inside of it. And by opening up the case and smelling inside of it, uh, you can definitely tell with just your nose alone that, uh, that there's something going on in there because it doesn't smell like fish as much as it usually do. It, it usually does. So it doesn't smell that bad. So that's the first thing that we could do uh, is get an immediate response by just our nose sensing what's going on, okay? 
The next thing we could do is we could also use one of these little chlorine detection badges, okay, by Safair. We're a, we're, a, we're a representative for this product because we also use chlorine in actual food safety applications where we uh, would like to use these chlorine detection badges as a, uh, a safety characteristic um, in, the, in, the, in a processing environment. There's a big difference between one pellet in a ice chest versus a high flow of chlorine at 12, 13, 14, 15 gallons per minute. And so these badges are, are very useful in a high flow rate, high volume environment. And so uh, odor detection uh, of chlorine is, is significant. We're not going to have that problem here, but we are going to use the tools designed for, for uh, safety in, in an employee environment to guide, kind of give us the, the presence or give us the idea of the presence of chlorine in this ice chest. So basically what I'm going to do is I just want to let you know what we're working with. I'm going to take one of these badges out. I'm going to stick it in the ice chest. And eight hours from now, I'm going to begin recording again. And first of all, we're going to see what the detectable uh, level of chlorine was in the ice chest. We're going to take a look at the uh, ice melt in there. And we're going to take a look at you know, what, what, we, what we anticipate the sensory to be or what, what my opinion of the smell to be is, you know, is, it, it's, is, it a, is there a chlorine smell or not? Then we're going to look at the actual tool that measures chlorine in air uh, by Safe Air. Um, and then we're going to go on and just wrap up our uh, study here that we're going to do. You know, But I just want to convince you of the fact that chlorine is safe. Chlorine is being used every day in laundry mats to bleach and, and brighten and so forth. And so what we're using calcium hypochlorite, which the active ingredient is chlorine, is just to be an odor counteractant. That means to mask or uh, change the odor profile within an ice chest when there's uh, fish or any other storage item in that ice chest. That's, that's our goal there. And by visiting danmar.net, let me re repeat that, that's danmarco.net, that's D-A-N-M-A-R-C-O dot net. You can read about other uses of chlorine uh, use in the marketplace other than, wa uh, you know, w washing uh, whites and brightening them up. Chlorine is used in other applications and we want you to know about it, so that's why we have it on our website is the other applications of chlorine that are out there that people use it for. Uh, but more importantly, if you need an MSDS or if you need anything else, there's, uh, if you want to send me an email, going to our website, you can do that. Or you can call me up, 817-822-5767. I'd be glad to answer any questions you have. 817-822-5767. We thank you for this opportunity, and we'll be getting back with you. Okay, everybody, this is Paul Edwards. Uh, it's been eight hours since uh, we actually did this study uh, where we were using the uh, chlorine uh, badges, chlorine uh, parts per million and air badges that are available through Danmark Company uh, Safe Air product. I'm going to open up the uh, ice chest and we have our, uh, our uh, detection unit. And as you can see here, this is the, the, the neat thing about the badge, okay? Uh, I'm going to try to explain it to you. See this opening here on the badge? Okay, when I opened the badge, I pulled a tab off it, okay? And it has an, if you look close to it, it looks like an exclam exclamation mark, okay? And so then you, that, that exclamation mark there, that opening, is, this is a material that has a chemical reagent in there and it's measuring chlorine. And so when the gas uh, makes contact with that material there, it starts to discolor over an eight hour period. And if you look real close, you almost faintly see an exclamation mark there. Okay, so what you do is you take that, really, that's not really an exclamation mark that you would expect to have a significant measurable level, but we're going to go on and call it 
a uh, measurable level, but not significant. I mean, there is no well-defined uh, exclamation mark there, okay? You take that and you divide it by, uh, if that was a well-defined exclamation mark, you would take that well-defined exclamation mark, which is a, considered to be a point two, and you would divide that by the amount of hours that it has been exposed uh, to the chlorine. Uh, you divide that by eight hours, and so you're looking at point, was it two divided by eight? Uh oh, we're going back into it to the old days. Okay, so you'd have to have a point zero. And uh, I would say two would be 16, three would be 24. So you're looking at about two point, or I mean point zero uh, two five. Okay, if I had a calculator, I could give you exactly what it is. But that, that is exactly what it is. It's point zero two five. Okay, parts per million air. Now, certainly I'm noticing as well as you are that that says chlorine dioxide. Okay, well, it just so happens that the chlorine dioxide and the chlorine badge is the same badge. But rather, chlorine, you take 0.18 and divide it by 8 hours. So it would make it, you know, a little bit more, probably about 0.28 maybe, uh, rather than 0.25. Uh, 0.025 or 0.028, still well below the uh, maximum exposure level of uh, 0.1 part per million. So to make a long story short, uh, not only will I smell chlorine, which you faintly smell a little bit of chlorine, but it's, I'm talking very faint, but not only would you have a faint smell of chlorine rather than the uh, fishy smell, you also have a measurable accumulative chlorine present that is in the way of a gas within this closed container that is working against the foul odor that's present, okay? Well, folks, you've been really helpful and very, very interested in what we're doing, and I appreciate you watching this video. Uh, you're welcome to call me up at... Uh, at 817-822-5767 or you can send me an email uh, through the website and that's danmarco.net that's d-a-n-m-a-r-c-o dot net and um, please contact us if you have any questions but we really appreciate the opportunity to demonstrate uh, the Rascal Dan product and it's pretty late now I think Rascal Dan's asleep getting his nap so we just thank you for the business we thank you for your interest have a great day